Hello. Today, I'm going to continue the second part of the Excel workshop. I'm going to re-record the part where I talk about some other Excel function and some of the examples that I showed you during the workshop. The fourth function that's pretty popular for Excel is transpose. Transpose means that when you need to rotate your columns and your rows, that's how you transpose them. For example, looking at this table, we have item, bread, donuts, cookies, and so on, on a row, and also amount on a row. However, if you have seen tables in Excel, usually the row is the column, and it's easier to calculate and sort data through that way. What you're going to do is to highlight this whole table. You can right click and click copy or on your keyboard, you can press Ctrl plus C. When you're trying to paste, and here it say trying to paste in this yellow box. So right click that, there are many paste options. When you see this transpose, click transpose, and you will get the table that you want, which now the row is turned into a column. Next, it is also one of my favorite functions in Excel, which is sort and filter. You sometimes get an Excel sheet with this table and you want to maybe just look at the Department of Produce, how much they make in October, November, and December, or you just want to look at maybe chicken, breads, and sandwiches. So how do you do that easily? Same thing is you highlight the whole table. See it's highlighted. Go to the data tab and go to filter. You can see that there are one, two, three, four, five drop down fields showing up. So let's say you want your department in alphabetical order. Click the drop down field and select sort A to Z. Now the first row is bakery and the last one is produce. It's been sorted into A to Z. Look at December, you want to sort the amount from largest to smallest. So you can look at drop down field again and then click sort largest to smallest. So now it will sort it out for you. And now you can identify where in December, there's actually $2 million of sales in meat department, which is chicken. So now you want to filter the data that only bakery rows appear. So you can go to department, click again. You can unselect, select all, just to click it, and then you click bakery. This is how you filter data where you just want to look at one category or one department, then this is how you, it will only show bakery for you. Now you want to go back to the uh, previous table where it, will, it shows everything. Just click select all and the table will resume to the original one. So this is very, very helpful sometimes when you have a lot of data in there. You can actually also sort date or by color. Looking at this table, you have expense date, employee, amount of dollar that they spend on food and amount of dollar they spend on hotel. If you want to sort the date from oldest to newest, also click drop down field and sort oldest to newest. Then here you go, you have August 26th, as the first row and then September 1st as the last row. Now, if somebody has highlighted yellow for some reason and you want to sort them, you can do that too. Clicking the drop down fill and then select sort by color, click yellow highlighted cell. And there you go. You have the three highlighted yellow cells on the top three rows. There are actually more way to filter data and for this table, they already have the filter on. On the hotel cell, I want to click the filter button because I, I want to find out um, the, the above average range. So when I select above average, these are the uh, 
dollar amount where they spend that's above average. And these are Jackie, Trisha, Laura. They spend around more than $3,000 in this instance. Now I want to add a second fill field, which is on about food. So on food cell, I select this drop down button. And then let's say I want to select greater than $25. So you click 25 here. And now there's only Trisha and Laura left. So this is where you can say, okay, after filtering out people who are spending above average dollar in hotel and more than $25 in food, I found that Trisha and Laura are the one who fit the description. So it's pretty powerful with sort and filter. I think it will be very, very helpful for you and probably the most common function. If you want to make it to the original table, you can clear filter here or you can clear it by clicking clear here. Let's go to tables. So a lot of examples that I've showed you before, they're all table. They're formatted as table. Table gives you special features and convenience. When you have, this is what I call raw data where people enter those numbers and words in here and there's just nothing, you can see there's nothing, no formatting. When I want to insert a table, highlight the whole thing and go to insert table, it automatically detects that you have headers, which is the department category, October, November, December. Click OK, and now you have a table. You can also create rows pretty easily because it's a table. If you type and you type something in the empty cell, anywhere, anywhere below the meat and chicken row, such as if I type meat, maybe I want to add another meat, such as pork, and see how it just automatically add the row for you. Or if I want to add a produce or maybe dairy product, you can see it again extend a row for you. So that's pretty easy. Now. It's the same thing with column too, um, because October, November, then you probably have January. So once you click that, then it added a column on the right side. So I think that's a pretty neat function. If you will like, you can also change the color or formatting. So when you click here, format as table, currently this is the design. You can put it as black and white, orange, yellow, any kind you want. I usually will put like the gray color so I can see pretty easily this is the row of produce and this is the row of bakery. Sky's the limit. Now, if you want to calculate columns in table, the calculated column works this way. When you are do, trying to do total, you can click alternate and equal sign on your keyboard find the alternate and then click equal sign, it will t automatically sum up for you. It detected October, November, December are numbers, their numbers and therefore they're only adding up those three columns. And then you calculate your total just like that. I didn't even know that they have this function, so that's pretty good. If you want to have the total rows in table, so let's see here. What you want is okay, let's see here. Select any cell within the table on the right at the top of the Excel window. Okay, click table design. Here you can click total row so that it will automatically calculate the total number for you. This is trying to total up columns and this is trying to total up row. If you actually want the average, you can also try to find that out. When you click here, and then there's a drop down field, click average, and then that gives you average. So you actually don't have to uh, write the formula by yourself. Drop down. 
drop down is quite useful when you're trying to make a form in Excel. Looking at this table, we have foods such as apples, beef, and bananas. You want to put them into category in department. So apples would be produce, beef would be meat department, bananas would also be produce. If you want people to only select certain options and you don't want them to just type things in, what you want to do is that you want to select this well, in here it's yellow, but you want to select the cells that you want people to put the options in. Go to data and click data validation. Under allow any value, you want to choose list. In here, you want to put things, put things of your, put, or put your options in here. So maybe you want three departments and they are produce, meat and bakery. You select OK. Now you can see there's a drop down field here. You can select either produce, meat, and this is produce, or bakery. People can still type things in. However, if they have these options, it will make your Excel way more consistent and clean. Next, analyze data quickly. Sometimes when you look at the table, you're wondering um, what is the average or which one is that has the highest amount of dollar, which one has the fewest amount of dollar. And if you don't want to do sort, you can do this, select or highlight the whole table and then you will see quick analysis. What you can do is you can select data bars and you can see how the cells actually change and it indicates actually how much is in each cell. You can select color. In this case, green colors mean that it's the highest amount and then red color means it's not the highest, which is the fewest amount. It can be icon um, for greater. This one, they probably auto-calculate the average or they have some sort of formula behind it. I usually use data bar or color. And it's in that way, you can quickly see which one has the most amount of dollar and which one has the least amount of dollar. Sometimes you might want to make a chart to showcase how, to showcase the information you want to convey. When you give people this table, they're not sure what they're looking at, like truthfully, there are just too many information. So highlight this table and then press Control Q, this pop up again. You can select charts, and then you can try clutter. See, it kind of preview the chart that you can do. If you click the first one, now I'm going to enlarge it. They automatically um, make this chart for you. If this is the chart will help you convey the data on this table, feel free to use it. On the Y axis, which is here, this is the dollar amount. On the X axis, which is the horizontal one, these are the category of bread, bread desserts, and sandwiches. They automatically give the October blue color, orange is November, and gray color is December. So it's a very quick way to make chart like that. There are spark lines that I would encourage you to kind of find it out on your own, try to explore in Excel. It talks about charts again. Um, so here, if you're not sure what kind of chart you want to use, you can actually go to insert and then click on recommended charts. Excel will automatically recommend you some charts based on your table. Then you will see several recommendations, right? You can see this is the line, this is bars, this is lines with green and back. Let's see the second one. Looking at the table, this is about each different years, the number of conference attendance. As you can see, since 2015, 
the number of conference attendees actually have improved in 2020 there's actually more attendees than in 2015 so this is a very quick way for people to understand what you're trying to say in this case you're trying to say that oh our conference has more people to attend this year for the rest of the sheet in excel i i suggest you to explore them on your own I did not talk about some of the function because they might not be as common for you to use. So feel free to explore them at your own time and I wish you good luck in your journey. Thank you.